Hello and welcome to the exhibition Julio de Cunha, Modernizing Myths at the Delaware Art Museum. My name is Olivia Armandroff and as the Alfred Appel Jr. Curatorial Fellow at the Delaware Art Museum this past summer, I had the opportunity to research de Cunha's career as an artist and curate this retrospective exhibition. It's part of the Delaware Art Museum's Distinguished Artists series, an initiative that brings attention to artists that have made an important impact on Delaware's art scene. This is certainly the case for de Cunha, who taught at the University of Delaware and exhibited at local galleries, influencing a whole generation of local artists. He has a distinctive style. With bright colors, a flat aesthetic, and an emphasis on linearity, his paintings are distinctive. But he also is versatile, moving between series dedicated to abstraction and those dedicated to narrative subjects. De Cunha has had an important impact on the artistic community of Delaware. Although he was born in Colombia, de Cunha moved to the United States to attend college. He stayed, and after graduating from the Cranbrook Art Academy, he established himself at the University of Delaware in 1956. He would teach there for over 30 years, serving as chair of the art department and transforming it during his tenure by doubling its faculty and student body. He also taught at the honors program at the University of Delaware. At the university, he was engaged with his students outside of class, taking them to exhibitions in New York City and also bringing exhibitions to campus. De Cunha was also an important contributor to the greater art scene in Delaware. He exhibited at the annual Delaware show hosted by the Wilmington Society of Fine Arts, now the Delaware Art Museum, immediately upon arriving. He continued for an 11 of the annual shows and he won awards at three. This print, The Four Schizophrenias, won best print, pre best print in 1959. De Cunha never forgot his Colombian heritage. Before settling in Delaware, but after graduating from Cranbrook, he was responsible for several exhibitions in Bogota at the Galleria El Callejón and Galleria Setenta. Among his paintings exhibited in Colombia were abstractions on traditionally Spanish subjects, such as the flamenco and the waltz of the Torreadores, seen at the entrance up to the exhibition. This would continue until the end of his career, five decades later, when, in 2011, he painted a series known as De Soleares, titled after the most basic form of flamenco music. De Cunha describes himself as working in a Spanish tradition, and during his summer study in Spain in 1960, he spent time at the Prado Museum copying paintings of Maria Luisa de Parma by the court painter Francisco Goya. After returning to the States, he began the series of paintings called the Goyescas, dedicated to the subject of witches, a common theme for the Spanish artist. In his paintings inspired by Goya, de Cunha focused on women as subjects. He paints both Queen Maria Luisa de Parma and witches, a group of women who he thought had been unfairly maligned in history. After he moved on from the series, de Cunha continued to paint women as victims, including Lida from the mythological tale Lida and the Swan, and other scenes of abuse and rape. In these years, he moved between figuration and abstraction to capture this difficult subject. While the scene, this scene shows nude women in an all-consuming landscape, by 1975 he had entirely abandoned the figure. His series, The Entanglements, limits the color palette to five colors and explores themes of abstraction, including attraction and repulsion. They have a decidedly sexual tone. Some works, though, hover between figuration and abstraction, such as this series dedicated to the Roman myth of the Sabine woman. Rather than realistically representing female bodies, de Cunha composes his figures from geometric forms. By distorting, distorting their figures, and in this case, literally bisecting them by creating a diptych or painting consisting of two separate panels, de Cunha shows the painful ramifications of the abuse of women. In his figurative work, de Cunha was most interested in mythological subjects, and he painted Persephone, the Labyrinth, the Birth of Venus, Orpheus, and Icarus, among others. In his 1976 series, The Story of Basil, 
Cayuscu, a consummate rascal and pretender to the throne of the Albanians, de Cunha invented his own myth. What resulted were 21 panels that follow the lead character, Basil, as he defeats his rivals and retains his claim to the throne. The story is partially biographical. For this new material, de Cunha continued to draw upon past subjects, though, including the depiction of the crucifixion, a common motif that he first began working with in 1957 during his summer residency at the artist community of Yado. After his retirement from the university in 1991, de Cunha maintained a studio with the Delaware Center for the Contemporary Arts, now better known as the Delaware Contemporary. There, he continued to explore and grow as a painter and mentor a younger generation of artists. New mythological series, including ones dedicated to Perseus, Andromeda, and Salone, were created. In contrast to his earlier series, these included male subjects. Many appear androgynous. Here, in this photograph, we can see how de Cunha was challenging gender norms. De Cunha also embraced the landscape as a subject. He exhibited several series dedicated to the local Delaware landscape. This study may have impacted his creative practice too. And many paintings, such as this one entitled Andromeda's Predicament, show smaller figures in a larger landscape, a contrast to his earlier work, which put figures against an indefinite backdrop. Finally, in some of his last series he exhibited, he focused purely on the abstract. Here, in 2009, Les Fleurs des Mal, or The Flowers of Evil, shows de Cunha picking up on a subject he explored in 1970, a series of poems by the Frenchman Charles Baudelaire. He exhibited these works alongside their text, and in this case, A Voyage to Cytheria reads, Fair Isle of Green Myrtle, filled with full-blown flowers, always venerated by all nations, where the sight of hearts in adoration roll like incense over a garden of roses. The painting seems to show de Cunha's meditation on color, including his reflection on the intense hue of green myrtle. Other abstractions, such as his 2009 series, The Five Variations on Original Architecture, theme, show him using hard-lined geometric shapes and creating abstractions that resemble the industrial landscape. We hope you agree with us that Julio de Cunha is distinct in his style and versatile in his subjects, making an important mark on Delaware's artistic tradition. Thank you for joining us for this short tour of the exhibition Julio de Cunha, Modernizing Myths.